She's at Primary Children's Hospital in extremely critical condition, suffering from hypothermia and malnutrition. And yesterday it would have been eight, 10, maybe even 15 feet in some places. When he came up on this berm, he pulled a hard right, which caused him to bounce onto this soccer field about a half mile from the runway. It's clear this community is mourning. Several people have stopped by and left flowers. To give you an idea of scale, I'm five foot 10. And this is about 24 feet tall, 29 feet wide, and 51 feet long. Graphic designers say red, white, and blue works, but you can build a brand around a bolder color. They even have their own trading cards. Check these out. That one's cool. These were the homes hit hardest by the flood. Their yards used to be grass. Now they're just mud. They've had to take out a lot of things from their basements. The mud, muck, and debris wash over roads in a matter of minutes. It really didn't take long for water to move through, but the mess it left behind will be a problem for weeks. We're kind of notorious for flash flooding around here, so it happens, but I've never seen it back up the whole town like this. This is pretty unheard of, so. Nearly an inch of rain fell in 20 minutes. The water came on so hard and fast and helper, all people could do is watch as it flooded Main Street. And just basically swished in and took all of the mud. We had about six inches total. The water came through here with such force, it ripped this door in half and flooded the basement. A woman trapped inside had to swim to the stairs to get out. Everything down there was floating. I mean, TV, it was... It was devastated. Justin Wild heard his basement window burst and saw the mud fill to the ceiling in a matter of minutes. We've lost a lot of them. So family heirlooms, just, we've lost a lot. And with so much lost, the focus now is on salvaging what's left. We're just sweeping out the mud, pressure washing the garage, floor down, just to get it all pushed out and then we'll regrade and level after. But many homeowners say they found out after the storm they don't have flood insurance coverage. And even though the county expects federal assistance, it's help that feels very far away. I've never been to a point in my life that I've felt absolutely hopeless, and that's where I'm at right now, especially watching the clouds. And it just it makes me wonder if all the efforts that I've gone through and done today, if I'm just going to be doing it again tomorrow. He says at least this time they could try to prepare for whatever comes. That's the question on everybody's minds here. You can see over here, these ladies are going through some of the things they found in their basement, seeing what they can salvage and what they'll have to throw away. And this, this mud isn't going to be easy to get rid of. Check this out. It is now turning almost into cement, and this is at least a foot thick right here. They have a lot of cleanup to do. And now tonight, they're more focused on sandbagging and preparing for that next round of storms. Hope? Well, it's hard to believe that all of this has happened just uh, in the past 24 hours that all this damage occurred. Uh, any news on, you know, how long they think it's going to take them to sort through all that stuff and get back in the house before the next round of storms? You know, everybody's saying it's going to take weeks. Some people fared much better and they were able to clean it all out today. The roads are pretty clear. Um, they were able to do that in a matter of hours, but this place isn't going to look normal for quite a while. Hey, you guys look sexy. So um, do a story about how people on BYU are apparently smartest and best looking. Oh, look at the body. Collegeprowler.com came up with a list with input from students from several schools. You know the song. They averaged the hottest and smartest students at each school. I love being viewed as both smart and sexy. It's a, you know, double threat right there. Based mostly on subjective criteria. And BYU was number one on the list. I wouldn't argue with it. I work out. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Girl, look at that body. Students attribute that ranking to the honor code, which tells students to be modest, clean shaven, and well kept. Uh, well, we work pretty hard, so we deserve it. We're all going to be sober all the time, we might as well look good. The school is consistently ranked as a premier university for academics, too. I'm sexy and I know it. The thing is, is we're all so good looking, though. Ashton. It is hard. It's hard to exclude anybody. And I bet you if we stop, they'd be like, what's your major? Biochemistry. What's your major? Oh, advanced philosophy. What's your major? Oh, okay, great. 
Oh, you have a full ride scholarship? Oh, you have a scholarship? You have a scholarship? Wow, that's excellent. Wiggle, 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 yeah. Wiggle, 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 yeah, yeah. Do the wiggle, man. I do the wiggle, man. Yeah. I'm sexy and I know it. The students say modesty is the new sexy. And it's time everyone knows it. Ashton Goodell, Fox 13 News, Utah. The Highliners prefer Rock Canyon and Provo, but they've set up lines all over Utah. I followed them for three days as they tried to walk a line nearly 100 feet off the valley floor. Didn't take long to figure out. It's not as easy as they make it look. Wind adds a whole different element. It's so hard to walk a line in wind. Pray to the wind gods. I mean, you push through it and you walk the line because that's what we're here to do. <laughs> Why does it feel so weird? Each rig usually takes an hour or more and they don't know if it'll work. I don't know, man. Until they feel it. With this wind, it's like walking on, well, it's like walking on a rope during an earthquake, I guess. After one walk, the wind forces them to call it a day. Uh. The Highliners are determined to get another walk in. That's where we're rigging to right there. Even in the rain. But they're not willing to take unnecessary risks. There's a lot of media attention, like a lot of the accidents in Moab and stuff like that. And that's why we all take a lot of time just to be super, super cautious, triple, quadruple check everything. With that in mind, they pack it up before they even get started. This time they know on the hike up, it'll work. Everything looks better now? Yeah. Cool. Today feels wonderful. And that affects your walk because this sport is it's 90% mental. I'm gonna reset that for me. We're double checking each other. Cool. You know, he checks my side. It's actually pretty tight. <laughs> I check his side, make sure everything's locked and ready to go. Highlining is all about trust, trusting the line, trusting each other, because it's 90 feet down, 60 feet across. Oh man, how am I gonna get back? Ryan Robinson says before they became highliners, they practiced closer to the ground on slack lines. Holy cow. But they say once you know what you're doing, it feels safer up here. I'll take it in, but don't look down. I'm on top of the world. Hey. is unbelievable when you're out there but before any of that happens behind the scenes everything that we do is to be calculated and safe and composed and careful and so that's the part that I think a lot of people don't see when they look at these videos online and they just see people hucking themselves off of 400 foot drops onto rope swings. We do a lot of things and out of all the activities that we do whether it be climbing, canyoneering, skydiving, setting up rope swings, um, Highlining is by far the most terrifying for me. This coming from a guy who was the first to run off the Corona Arch Swing in this popular YouTube video. All right, kick back, relax, and grab yourself a beverage. Well, yes, there has to be a little bit of crazy going on here, but the thought process, the, the, me the mechanics of the setup of the line, is, it's impeccable, it's, it's perfect. The Highliners say they teach each other and share whatever knowledge they have Throw your other leg over the line just like your right leg is. Because they say their actions speak so loudly, nobody can hear the obvious warning of the dangers involved. People are realizing, oh, I can go out and get some webbing and some rope and some carabiners and, and rig some in extreme stuff. But it's not like that. It's, you definitely have to do your homework and go around for a couple of years. Like I said, I've been doing this about three years, and I, feel, I still feel like an amateur. <laughs> Highlining is dangerous, but not illegal in Utah's canyons. The experts recommend people start on slack lines and always go out with an experienced canyoneer. In studio, Ashton Goodell, Fox 13 News, Utah.
Well, hope this is the perfect time to explain how it works, being that rush hour is upon us. So during their early morning commute, four of the six lanes head into the city and then it switches back around for the evening commute. Four of the lanes head back west and in the time in between, it just stays normal. Still confused? Well, so is everyone else. If you're in a lane with a red X, you're going the wrong way. Now I have to really, really focus. The white arrow show where you can turn left. Yeah, that's right. No, left. But now it's getting to be a much more confusing commute. And if you're following a green arrow, well then, you figured it out. Let's see, what's all this stuff now? <laughs> see, was that so hard? But I think there's going to be a lot of accidents. So it's not as confusing as it seems. At 6 o'clock in the morning, the lane switch, so there are four so people can get into the city faster. And then at 3 o'clock, it switches back so people can get home faster. Normally, people are used to looking at the lane lines on the ground. Now they have to look above their heads a little bit in order to see where they need to be. 40,000 cars travel this road every day. It's congested, but the city couldn't widen the road. We have too many businesses, too many homes. Uh, to widen this would have been extremely expensive. So UDOT had to make do with what it had by adding a flex lane. I think that'll save a lot of congestion in the long run. Many drivers don't like the flex lane now, but if it means they'll get home faster, well then, they'll be flexible too. I think it's a good idea. It definitely gets busy here during like rush hour, peak hours. The $5 million project is expected to save every driver a couple of minutes coming and going, and it took about three years to build. Bob Hope. All right, but Ashton, it may take folks a little time to figure it out, don't you think? Oh, yeah, it's going to take me a while. I, I, <laughs> I'm going to admit it. Maybe I shouldn't say this on live TV, but there are some red arrows, and I'm just not sure if I was supposed to go or not supposed to go, and I went. So, But, you know, red means bad, and I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ashton, thank and thank you for your honesty. Yeah, well.